I'm Rod Serling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Glenn Hall Taylor's story of murder and fear. That is the puppeteer. Starring Lyle Wagner. In a mutual broadcasting system presentation of The Zero Hour. Brought to you by the Ford Motor Company, Beech Nut Chewing Tobacco, Shenley Industries, Matus Wine, and Kodak. This is The Zero Hour on Mutual Radio. here, the man who knows everything about everything. What baseball record does Greg Bruno hold? An original copy of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Hello, Mr. Nodal. Who made up Abraham Lincoln's cabinet? Carl Schwab in Walnut. Hello, Mr. Nodal. Can you tell me where the Great Plains are located? At the Great Airports, of course. Hello, Mr. Nodal. What compact car offers two gas stingy engines, a six-cylinder, and the smallest displacement V8 made by a major American manufacturer? Oh, uh, well, that's the... Uh, that's uh, Ford Maverick, Mr. Nodal. Oh, I didn't know that. And did you know that the five-passenger Maverick has more rear seat leg room than either Nova or Valiant? I didn't know that either. Well, now that you know, stop in at your local Ford dealer. Over the last five years, Ford dealers have sold more small cars, cars with wheelbases of less than 112 inches than any other single group of dealers in America. Come see your local Ford dealer. He's small car headquarters. Hello, this is the new Mr. Know-it-all. Since the time of the ancient Greek theater with its processions and its choruses, man has been fascinated with seeing and hearing his dreams, his frustrations, and his revels reenacted upon the stage. In the theater, he may laugh at high comedy or tremble at stark tragedy. And when tragedy strikes where there is comedy, it is most telling. As in the story you're about to hear. But our drama occurs not on stage, but backstage. In a theater where a revival of vaudeville is being held. May Gramby of the comedy team of Gramby and Gramby emerges from a dressing room, descends a spiral iron staircase, and crosses to the stage door. Hey, where are you going, May? Out. But you're on in 15 minutes. Not me. Let me out of here. Hey, wait a minute. Cool it. Now, what's the problem? I'm through. I've had it. I'm turning in my grief. Look, baby, you can't walk out like this. It ain't professional. Don't give me that show must go on garbage. Does Al know you're leaving? I don't care whether that bum knows or wants to stop. Uh, now, now, wait. Hey, hey, Pop. Right here, Mr. Wakefield. Go up down Granby's dressing room. Ask him to come down here, will you? Oh, okay. Now, let, let's try to settle this thing. Now, what's the beef this time? The beef this time and all the time is that I just can't stand working with him. But he's your husband. He's also a comic. Well, he ain't funny. He says I sing off key. He says I step on his laugh. All he says, comics are like that. You can't walk out on him just because he gets a fight over a performance or two. Oh, that ain't why I'm walking out. He's on a new kick now. He thinks I'm on the make for Tom Kent, that tenor in the flash act. What would I want with a tenor? I like a guy with... Have you given Al any reason to be jealous? No. Kent told me I had real talent, and I told him I thought he was a real doll to say so. Al heard only the real doll part and blew a stack. Now he thinks we've got a scene going between us. The whole fight was over that? Yeah. But it was one fight too many, and if you think I'm going to let any blackface comic, even if he is my husband... Excuse me, Mr. Wakefield... Mr. Grampy can't come down. Why not? He's dead. Oh, um, not Al. Uh, you the manager of this theater? That's right. I'm Wally Wickfield. I'm from Homicide, Dan McBride. Have you touched anything in this dressing room since the body was discovered? Not a thing. 
I found Mr. Granby just like that. The reason he's in blackface, Lieutenant, is that he and his wife are due to go on. Incidentally, uh, I went on stage and told the audience the remainder of the performance was canceled due to a death in the cast. Mm, good. I mean, what's the story on this man Granby? He was a relic from the old days of vaudeville. After all, burnt court comics aren't exactly the new generation's idea of hip comedy. Mm. Did he work by himself? No, his wife played straight for him. She here? Downstairs. Oh, by the way, uh, she hasn't seen the body yet. We mm. got it. But we'd better get things cleaned up a bit first. Yeah, and uh, you discovered the body, right? Yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Wakefield. We we were all downstairs backstage. Asked me to come up here and send Al down to him and May. Uh, May? Yeah, that's Mrs. Granby. When I came up, the dressing room door was closed. I, I knocked. When I got no answer, I opened the door and peeked in uh, on account of I'd seen Al in here just a few minutes before. Mm -hmm. And he was lying just as he is now? Yes, sir. Uh, did you ever see that knife before? Many times. It's been in the prop room for years. Yeah, that'd be where the stage properties or supplies and other paraphernalia kept? Right. Yeah. Any idea who might have done this? No, sir. Did you hear any arguments, uh, quarreling or anything before the stabbing? No. Yeah. Any strangers come in or go out your stage door? No. Okay. That'll be all for now, but we may want to talk to you again, so don't leave the theater. Why should I leave? I work here all night. Mr. Wakefield, as I recall, you said you hadn't seen the body until I arrived. Right. Uh, uh, after I'd insisted Mrs. Granby not come up here, I stayed with her trying to calm her down. When did you see him last? During the supper show. How long have you known him? Quite a few years, on and off. I used to manage a vaudeville house. I booked the act several times. Mm -hmm. How'd you get along with him? Oh, fine. Hey, look, you don't think I have I any. was just asking a question. We got along fine, very friendly. Mm -hmm. Had uh, he had any trouble, arguments or such, with any of the people who were working here? One, his, his wife. Oh? What sort of trouble? Oh, the usual man and wife spats, professional jealousies popping up and so on. He had a big go-round only today, as a matter of fact. I caught her just as she was walking out of the show. Did she say what made her decide to leave? Said Al gave her a bad time, suspicious that she was getting involved with Tom Kent. Who was Tom Kent? A singer. Works in the flash act on the bill. Was she involved? Well, she told me she wasn't. And as far as I know, she was always loyal to Al. And I was always loyal to Al. you got to believe me. I'll try. Uh, Mrs. Granby, do you think you're up to looking at your husband's body now? As up to it as I'll ever be, I guess. What is it? That body. That's not my husband. It, it isn't? No. Take that wig off him. A wig, huh? Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, there we are. You see? Oh, no. That guy's got blonde hair. That's Tom Kent. <laughs> Rosé is any kind of wine you want it to be. It's a picnic wine, a candlelight wine. Just try some. It's the one to throw away. Give the whole money up. That and more I hope. Whatever you got. Oh, it's rosé. You like it a lot. Matus is a rosé wine imported from the old world to go with everything good. It has a light, easy-to-like taste, so it makes good food even better. Good people, friendlier. And good times, well, just try some and see. Imported by Draper's Ashby & Company, New York, New York. To be any kind of wine you want it to be. Granby didn't leave the theater? Sure as I'm standing here. Not by the stage door, anyway. Did you get anything from the other ushers or doormen, Mr. Wakefield? Checked them all. None of them saw Al Granby leave by any of the exits.
Hello. Communications? Lieutenant McBride here. I want you to put out a pickup on Al Granby. Suspicion of murder. About five foot ten, auburn hair, balling in front. Now, give me the laboratory, please. This is Lieutenant McBride. I need a lab man over here at the Henry Irving Theater. Yeah. And have him bring a photographer along, too. Get him over here on the double. Hiya, Pat. You made good time. The body's right there. You know the angles I need. Shoot him. Right, Dan. Oh, and Dave, dust the knife handle for prints. And maybe the doorknob and the dressing table. Yeah, I'll, I'll get everything I can. While I was waiting for you guys, I figured out something. I think the blackface makeup and the wig and the dressing gown were put on this man after he was killed. Take a look at the hole in the fabric, right around the knife. Uh, yeah, you're right. The, the knife didn't make that hole. It was cut or torn so the dressing gown could be slipped over the knife handle. Right. And I think he died immediately. There's only one blotch of blood here. Obviously, he didn't move around after the stabbing. Now then, come over here to the other side of the room. Now, this is a puzzler. There's blood stains on the floor and on the windowsill. I'd say this is how Granby got out. He was bleeding, too. Well, then he must have been wounded while attacking the dead man. Not likely. The dead man was stabbed from behind, and there is no sign of a struggle. Yeah, well, I suppose it could be that... Well, what was that? That sounds like the old doorman. Come on. Now, watch it, Dave. These stairs are tricky, and the whole stage is dark. Oh, here, I got my flashlight. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's better. It is the doorman. I can't see you, Pop. Are you okay? Dave, shine your light over there towards the stage door. Hey, look. There he is, stretched out on the floor. Take it easy, old-timer. Now, don't move, don't move. Now, tell me, what happened? He hit me on the head and got away. Who, Pop, who? Al, Al Granby. Who's there? It's me, McBride. Oh, the idea of sneaking out here to the box office. I gave explicit orders no one was to leave the green room. Well, I had business to attend to. We cancel a show tonight. That means a lot of refunds. I wanted to go over the receipts. Why didn't you ask permission? Well, I did. The cop you stationed at the green room said it's okay. You should have asked my permission. I'm sorry. How'd you get out here? Through the stage door? No, I came out to uh, one of the fire exits at the side of the theater. Were the lights on backstage when you left? Yeah. Why? Hmm. We found the lights turned out, and Pop was slugged. Whoever clobbered him must have gotten out the stage door into the alley. You were seen in the alley. The fire exit's open on the alley. I never touched the old boy. Look, if I was planning to take it on the lamb, I wouldn't be here now, would I? You might be. You could be out here emptying the till while looking for a chance to split. Well, you could get laughs on that routine. Okay, I'll give you a straight line. What about the fight you had with the tenor, Tom Kent, the dead man? Who told you that? One of the stagehands. Now, come on. Lock up your cash and get back to the green room. Oh, hi, Dave. Right. Are you about through? I've got all the pictures we need. Yeah, I think I'm about done. I d hmm. The morgue's taking the body. Yeah, Dan okayed it. Yeah, well, where is he now? Oh, he decided to investigate further. You know, the blood over there on the windowsill. Oh, so that's why the window's open. Oh, what'd he do, get down the fire escape? Yeah, he's on his way back up now. <sighs> Wait, it's hard to believe. When I was a rookie in uniform, I chased a guy up a fire escape to a third-story balcony. <laughs> that was before I developed a balcony of my own. <laughs> well, at least the climb down and back was worth it. Even if I did get half the dust on the fire escape all over my nice new double knit. Here, here, let me let me help you brush it off. No, oh, no, no, thanks. I can manage. By the way, uh, I've concluded that Al Granby didn't slug the old doorman. So what now? I'm releasing all the suspects. Hey, you found the murderer? Not yet. But I have a hunch who it is. Let's go downstairs. More questions, Lieutenant? Not for now, Mrs. Granby. Does that go for me also? Yep, you're on your own. And you can buzz off too, Pop. These are my working hours. I stay. No, do what you like. Right now, I'm going to concentrate on finding Al Granby. If you find him, please call me. i got to know what's happened to him. I'll let you know, Mrs. Granby. 
Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. I'll be around if you need me. Thanks a lot. Hey, you two stick with me. Okay. Hey, hey uh, where are we going? Back downstairs into the theater. Into the theater? Yeah. But this time, we're going by way of the fire escape. The man teach a man what he can't and he can't. No man makes exceptions for you. You learn to stay on your guard, looking out for your part. You learn boots nuts that are back of your chew. Like my daddy told, when you go after cold, you're not down there to take in the view. You keep respect for the mind, concentrate all the time. Poor speech nuts for the back of you chew. What makes Beach Nut such a traditional favorite? It's cause Beach Nut just keeps on getting better. It's a moisture, more satisfying chew. Next time you're buying chewing tobacco, try Beach Nut. You won't be disappointed. Then when your shift's done, you come back to the sun. You and the boys hoist a view. It ain't such a bad life. She ain't such a bad wife. You got your Beach Nut tobacco to chew. Two stories seems when you're outside a building. Uh, don't worry. If you fall, it's not any higher outside than it is inside. Hey, hold it. Yeah, this is the level we want. Uh, they we're lucky the window isn't locked. Well, uh, what's in there, Dan? The property room. Hey, this is directly below Al Granby's dressing room, isn't it? And that's what gave me the idea. Now then, when I open the window, everybody climb in. Uh, yeah. Shh. Be absolutely quiet. Oh, gee, it's dark. Uh, how about my flashlight? No, 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 no. Can't take a chance. Well, uh, what are we looking for? We're not looking for. We're waiting for. When who are we waiting for? I don't know for sure, but I have a hunch. Hey, uh, close that window. I don't want whoever comes in to suspect anything. Now, that's good. Now, Dave, have your flashlight handy, but don't turn it on until I give the word. Yeah, all set, man. Okay, fellas, now be quiet and get behind that big packing case. No, 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 not that one. This one. Now then, that door over there leads to backstage. It won't be long before someone comes through that door, and whoever it is, it'll be our murderer. Shh. Shh. Someone's coming. Okay, you. Hold it. Turn that flashlight on, Dave. Don't shoot. It's me, Pop. Yeah, we know it's you, Pop. We can see sharp and clear. Here, get your hands behind your back. Do you have to do that? I'm afraid so. After what you've done, I don't want you to get your hands on me. How'd you know, Lieutenant? A stagehand told me you used to perform in musical comedy. He said that sometimes, when you were singing as you worked around here, Tom Kent, whose voice was young and still in good form, made fun of you. Well, he didn't have to needle me about sounding like a frog or an old crow. He never sang opposite Fritzy Schaff or Blanche Ray or... I couldn't take it any longer. I had to wipe that sneer off his face. You better not talk until you get a lawyer, Pop. I know all that stuff about my rights. I don't want a lawyer. And I killed Al Granby, too. Hey, what? Hey. Because he saw you kill Tom Kent, right? Right. He was a witness. I had to kill him. Yeah, that's why he couldn't have slugged you backstage. He was already dead. And you were the only one with a key to the master light switch box. You switched off the house lights and faked being slugged. Yeah, but why did you blacken Kent's face? Why that afro wig? And why wrap him in Granby's dressing room? That was stupid, I guess, but I figured it would confuse the police long enough for me to take care of Al and get out of town. Uh, It was all for nothing, wasn't it, Lieutenant? I'm afraid it was, Pop. And if you'd been thinking straight, you should have known that at your age you couldn't have carried off a packing case with a man's body in it. Was that what I was going to drag out of the prop room? (laughs) He'd never have made it. (laughs) Haven't you noticed? He didn't make it. So there it is. 
because she's uh-huh. missing all these great pictures. She needs everything. <laughs> That's amazing. Listen, and I think I have exactly what you're looking for. It's, it's a be brand a new lady. thing. It's a Kodak Pocket Smile Saver yeah, look Kit. Look at that, will you? It has a Kodak Pocket Instamatic 10 camera and a oh, neat got a camera. Case case. and film and, and magic, magic cubes. cubes and well, that's everything frame. she needs. Exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, I can't needs. spend a lot of money on well, this. Well, this, 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 is, this is perfect. This is less than $30. Oh, that's terrific. It's a complete outfit? I can't believe that. <laughs> How are you going to get this to her? <laughs> I'm going up on the roof like I get her everything. I'll just hand it to her as she goes by. She goes Every by? 90 minutes. Every 90 yeah, minutes. Yeah, at an altitude of 38 feet. That's yeah. really well, low. Well, that liftoff was a little, uh, uh-huh. a little off. That's we, a good orbit. I don't know where she goes. Tell me how she got started as an amateur astronaut. Boy, I wish I knew. <laughs> she was rewiring the house. Now available for a limited time only. The Kodak Pocket Smile Saver Kit for less than $30. It makes a smile go a long, long way. Oh, I can't wait to see the picture she takes with it. Splashdown is... Thursday in the pool. <laughs> I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes. Exercise your imagination. And join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. Death is the Puppeteer is a radio drama adapted by Glenn Hall Taylor. Lyle Wagner was heard as Dan McBride. Featured in the cast were Jim Bowles, Grace Leonard, Tony O'Dare, Jerry Dexter, and Herb Beichner. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Colas, directed by Don Hills, is produced in Hollywood for the Mutual Broadcasting System by Radio Productions Incorporated. Music is composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman. Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System.